This Clark County home right by Prairie High School is where Nagasi Zuberry lived from summer 2022 to spring 2023. Neighbors tell us they had a bad feeling about the 29-year-old, and that includes Danny Bratskoff. He did make some threats towards me that he was going to stab me or, or kill me if he catches me outside somewhere. Get off my property. Get off my property. Bratskoff says this cell phone video he shot is proof of Zuberry's bizarre behavior. That night that he was uh, yelling at me, he literally looked like a killer. Literally, his eyes were, were just, it was, it was actually scary. I stayed away because I knew he was a hothead. This woman did not want to share her name, but she also lived near Zuberry. She wasn't aware of what he did for a living, only that he made some cash by breeding and selling pit bulls, about 10 of them, and subleasing space in his house. Like he was subleasing every single space that you could possibly, like literally the living room. The like, I think they had like a little open area when you come up the stairs, kind of like a loft area. He was subleasing that. There were beds there. Like it was weird. There was a lot of different people. While it may have been weird, it pales in comparison to what the FBI revealed about Zuberry on Wednesday. Federal agents say in mid-July he solicited a woman for sex in Seattle, then told her he was an undercover cop and she was under arrest. Zuberry then shackled the woman and drove her 450 miles south to his new home in Kalamath Falls, sexually assaulting her along the way. Inside the garage of this home Zuberry was renting, from the mayor of Kalamath Falls of all people, he's accused of locking the woman up in a cinder block cell. The woman fought for her life, beating the doors and the walls of this cell with bloodied hands. Through her perseverance, she broke free and waved down a passing motorist. Within hours of the woman's daring escape, police captured Zuberry in Nevada, one of the 10 states he's called home in the last 10 years. And since his arrest, detectives have tied Zuberry to three more sexual assaults in three of those states. And they fear there could be even more victims. And perhaps that explains why the FBI paid Bratskoff and his roommates a visit earlier this week. There was multiple victims. There was multiple girls that they that they showed pictures of to us. And, and they were asking us if we, if we knew about these, these people or, or these girls. Uh, we obviously didn't know any of them. What Bratskoff and other neighbors do recall is seeing a young woman crying outside Zuberry's Vancouver home months ago when he still lived there. My husband's like, do you want us to call the cops? Like, do you need help? Do you want some tea? Like, it's freezing out here. And she's like, no, I'm not going to tell you what he did to me. She said those exact words. Words that now haunt Zuberry's old neighbors who are relieved he's off the streets and behind bars. So I'm so happy that he's he's gone and hopefully it's going to be for a while. It's worth mentioning I did speak to a sergeant with the Clark County Sheriff's Office and he tells me in the time that Nagasi Zuberry lived in the area, deputies did respond to his house a number of times for things like noise complaints, welfare checks, and neighbor disputes involving Zuberry and the people he lived with and others. But nothing ever rose to a criminal level and there were no arrests. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News.